if you've been following my channel for the past week, you'll know that I came across a phishing server, which led to a video about passwords, which led to a video about the dark web. And now here we are talking about password spraying. So thanks for checking out my channel. If you guys are new here, please do consider hitting that subscribe button um, and definitely hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That'll help me out a ton. But basically, I came across this GitHub uh, tool, or I guess I should say this tool on GitHub, which really helps with password spraying, which is a technique that attackers will use where they take a list of really common passwords, you know, think like password one, password one, two, three, winter 2020, and they'll just try to spray them across a network and see if any of them happen to be valid credentials anywhere. So this is an, it's an awesome tactic that they use if they come across a list of usernames or, you know, if they're able to somehow enumerate uh, email addresses or whatever, they could try to password spray and, and just see what they can get into. So that's what we're going to talk about today, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy this one. All right, so to set the stage, what we're looking at is three different computers here. Um, and I went ahead and created my own little virtual environment. We're, we're dealing with a domain called nba.local. Uh, I just decided to go with, with a, a basic NBA theme because it made coming up with the, the naming structure really easy. So we've got three computers, and each one are, are different users, a part of that active directory environment. Um, the, the server that actually manages that domain is actually right here. And we could pull open the, the list of active directory users, which are all there. So what we're going to be doing is taking this list of users, and we're just going to try password spraying. We're going to see if we can take a basic password and try to authenticate as each of these users with that password. If that doesn't work, we'll take the next basic password, see if, if we can authenticate as a as another user, right? And just continue down the path until hopefully we get something. Um, so we need to start by pulling out a list of all of the users in the network. And so since I'm on the, the domain controller, it's super easy for me to do this here in PowerShell. I can just say get ad user, and we can do a quick filter for everything. Cool. And then the only thing here, let me move this up a bit. So the only thing I actually care about is this field right here, that SAM account name. So I'm going to run that same command, but I'm going to say select the same account name. Nice. So now we have a list of just the actual account names. And I don't care about these default built-in AD users. In a real assessment, you'd probably want to try to go after the administrator as well. Um, you just got to be careful, right? Because you don't want to you don't want to lock any users out. But luckily, the, the tool that I showed you guys earlier on GitHub um, actually has some features that, that help us with that. All right, so we got we got a list of users copied to our clipboard. So I'm going to move over our attack machine. And in here, I already have that spray tool from GitHub downloaded. Um, but before I go into that directory, I just want to go ahead and make a quick users.txt file. It will paste in everything that we just copied. And it looks like the first entry didn't get copied all the way. OK. All right, so that's the list of users here. And then we'll go in and Writer, writer changes to that file. Um, let's hop into the spray directory, see what we have going on in here. And we've got this spray.sh. So I'm going to copy that, clear out the contents here, and let's just go ahead and try to run the tool. And obviously, we get a ton of output, right? We've got the, the help documentation. But what I care about is this line talking about the usage. So we need to target a, a computer on the domain. We need to provide a list of usernames that we just prepared. And then we need to provide a, a list of passwords that we want to try. Also, we need to give it the accounts, uh, sorry, the attempts per lockout, and then how long that lockout's going to last. And then finally, a request file at the end. So what this piece is talking about here is in most active directory environments, they're configured so that way uh, people can't just brute force accounts, right? They can't just try every single possible combination. Once you once you enter a password wrong a few times, usually that's going to lock the account out for some set period. You know, and, and I've seen this range because it, it's customizable to each organization and what their what their needs are. But on average, you can typically see, you know, like five 
uh, after five incorrect logins, that'll lock the account for 30 minutes, you know, or five incorrect logins within a 30 minute window will lock it out for 30 minutes or something like that. Um, so that's actually what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we can only try five different logins within a 30 minute period. That would be 10 logins an hour that we're able to attempt. Uh, and this is per user account, right? So we can come up with a list of passwords. Maybe that password has 50 different, you know, maybe that list has 50 different really basic passwords in it. And we're just going to take those 50 passwords and within a, a 10 hour period, or I guess a five hour period, if we've got 10 attempts per hour, then we can throw that a list uh, against the list of all of our users and we'll probably pop a couple, right? Especially if, if they're using weak passwords and especially if we have a, a really large user list to go against. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna expand on it. I'll clear this out. Let's go back a sec. Since we know we're gonna need a password list, I'm gonna go ahead and come in and we'll make passwords.txt. And then this is where, you know, my previous video about analyzing passwords is really handy because if we know what type of passwords people use, that'll help us come up with this list that we're about to create, you know? And so we know winter 2020 is probably a common one and there might be different variations of it. So we'll try, you know, maybe it's all lowercase, right? It should probably fall 2020, right? These are all just really, really common ones. Uh, I think we saw this one in the in the password list, right? Something like that. Um, obviously, we could try some really basic like password, password one, two, three. You can do password like that, right? So just really, really dumb. I mean, people, a lot of the times, they'll, they'll try really stupid, really basic passwords. Um, knowing that we're targeting an NBA environment, we might try things like NBA one, two, three, basketball one, two, three, basketball one, right? So we can just try a bunch of different things and, and see what ends up coming up. Um, I mean, I think this is a good list to start with and we'll go ahead and save this out. But, you know, imagine that we expanded on this and, you, you know, we've got maybe 50 to 100 different, different passwords that, that we could try. So we've got our password list. We've got our user list. Let's head back into this spray directory and we can go ahead and clear out our screen. Okay, so with things kind of set up, we are ready to start crafting our uh, our actual command. So we know that we're gonna run uh, the, the name of the tool, right? Which is spray.sh. We wanna also specify what protocol we're using to authenticate against. So this is gonna be SMB in our case. And then we're also going to come in and we're going to provide uh, an IP address for the target that we're going to hit. Now we could pick any one of these machines, um, but I'm going to use this guy because we might as well just throw all of our authentication requests off to a single machine. We don't have enough here. We're not doing enough uh, authentication requests to, to worry about trying to spread the load across multiple machines. Um, but in a large environment, that might be something you want to consider. Also, I should know what we're about to do is going to be pretty noisy. So if the environment is set up in a secure way and they've got alerting in place, hopefully this is something that that they'd be able to uh, catch and, you know, we wouldn't be able to do this undetected. So we've got we've got a, an IP address here. 10.0020. And that's going to be where we authenticate against. We'll also need to go ahead and provide the list of usernames as well as the passwords. Perfect. And then we need to specify what the um, what the actual password policy is. How many password attempts do we want to try within a, a given period of time, right? And so this is where some recon is needed. You've got to do some enumeration as an attacker to figure out what password policy they have in place in the environment, right? Because you don't want to do too much because if you do, you're going to lock out the accounts and actual people won't be able to log into their machines. But at the same time, you don't want to do too little because then you're not going to get through your entire password list and you could be taking much longer than, than you need to. So if you can figure out exactly what password policy they have in place, you can tweak this uh, these values to be just what you need. What I'm going to do in my case is I'm going to say we're going to do three password attempts every 31 minutes. And the reason why is because, um, you know, in our environment, we're assuming that there's going to be five 
invalid logins that are allowed within a 30 minute period. And then that counter resets every 30 minutes. By doing three and 31, we're making sure that even if a user were to type their password in incorrectly, we're not gonna cause them to lock their account out. Um, you know, if we set this at four or five, then there's a really, really high chance that we could still cause a denial of service for those users. And then we're also sending this to 31 minutes instead of 30, because if our timer is just slightly off for whatever reason, um, you know, we could start trying more passwords a little bit too soon, which could then end up messing our counter up. So we'll say three password attempts every 31 minutes. That'll still give us six password attempts per hour, which is pretty good, right? We can just let this run overnight and see what we get. Um, finally, we'll need to specify the domain name which we've got here. Okay, so with our command prepared, I think we're ready to go ahead and start the attack. Nice, check it out. So it's already finding some stuff for us. Um, we can see right away, it starts by trying the username, username. So it's gonna take the list of users and it's gonna try to authenticate itself based on its own username. After that, it's gonna go through and try to spray with the word or the word password 2020 explanation. After that, it's gonna do winner 2020, and then it'll just continue down the list, right? To try to avoid locking out any sort of users. And, and we could see right away, it actually appears to have cracked the D Lillard uh, password. And what we can do is we can open this up and I'm still in a directory from a previous video I made, but we'll just change into videos. Uh, and then I've got password spray, and then we've got the spray directory. So in here, there is a logs directory, and there is credentials.txt. So I'm gonna actually clear this out. We'll do a till F, which is just gonna keep that file open for any changes. And we can just watch credentials.txt as, as it kind of populates. But check it out. It found that the username D Lillard is using password winner 2020 explanation point. And noticed it already went through three different password attempts, right? So it tried usernames, it tried winner 2020 explanation, and then now it's doing winner 2020, and then it's halting. And that's because we said only do three within a 31 minute period. And so while we did crack D Lillard, we didn't crack any of the others, and we've already had three incorrect password attempts on them. So we don't wanna lock those user accounts out. In my case, I don't actually have a real um, you know, lockout threshold set, so I'm gonna actually just remove this and we'll run and just let it go wild. Just kidding, it looks like it needs, <laughs> looks like it needs that. So we'll come back, um, I don't know, zero, zero, see if that, nice. Okay, so it went through the entire list already. It's already done. And now we can come back and we left this file open in the bottom half to show us as new entries got populated. And it looks like, it found that this guy's using password one, two, three. This guy's also using password one, two, three. Looks like we crack Le LeBron James's password here. And it uh, looks like the Roar agent's using password one, two, three. Kobe Bryant here has basketball one, right? And so we were actually able to just come in and, and crack all of these different credentials. Now, granted, yes, I, I, I staged this video, right? I knew what the passwords were uh, when I created the password list, but the thought process is the same. And, and this kind of just shows you and, and gets that idea um, where you take basic passwords, your users are gonna be using basic passwords if you let them. And and this is a one quick and, and easy way for people to test your own environment. See if you have users in your environments that are using basic passwords and try to you know put a stop to it. You can, you can try to blacklist or net words in your password policy and say, hey, you can't use these basic words. Um, you know, and educate your, your people. If, if your people know that these type of attacks exist and how easy they are to perform, then they're going to think twice before they go and do it. Now, let's, uh, let's make sure I'm not lying to you. Let's grab, you know, D Lillard here, which copy that. Or actually, this is Kobe Bryant, right? So basketball one, I'll come in and I'll type basketball one. We can show that that's what I typed in. And we're in. See? All right, guys, that's it for this video. Again, if you like this, please do let me know what you thought and, and consider sharing it around. Um, until next time, I'll see you then.